they ask you to find the derivative of an inverse. So if f has an inverse function g, we could also call g f inverse, okay? Then the derivative of that inverse is 1 over the derivative of the inverse. Okay, so what? All right, let's see how we actually use this. So write down that rule. You need this rule. So, for example, let's say that they give us the function f of x is equal to 1 fourth of x cubed plus x minus 1, and they tell us f of 2 equals 3. The first question is, what's the value of the inverse when x equals 3? So, what's f inverse of 3? Can we algebraically find a rule for that inverse function? We can switch x and y and find y of that function right there? Really? You can solve this for y? If you can, you're in the wrong class. Because you're way better at math than I am. Because you cannot solve that for y. Okay. You cannot solve that for y. I'm asking, can you find an inverse function rule for that function? No. No, we cannot find the inverse. We cannot, we cannot algebraically find the inverse. That's why they tell us this. If f of 2 equals 3, then we know f inverse of 3 equals 2. The inverse switches your x and your y points. Okay? That's from way back when somewhere. I know I taught that to you in pre-calculus. Um, so, that's the answer for x. What is the value of f inverse of x when x equals 3? f inverse of 3 is 2. Okay, now, here's the next question. What's the value of the inverse's derivative when x equals 3? Well, I don't have a rule for the inverse, so I can't take the derivative of it, but here's the rule. f inverse prime is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. That's the rule. <laughs> because they, for some reason, they don't want to write the g and the f, in, or they don't want to write the f inverse and the f prime. I prefer it like this because this makes more sense. But sometimes they like to say g is the inverse of f. So what I wrote in purple is the exact same thing as what I have up there. Okay, g is the inverse. So I just wrote the inverse notation right there. So I didn't mean to put an x right there. I was real distracted. Yes. So, to find the derivative of the inverse at 3, it's 1 over f prime of f inverse of 3. We just found f inverse of 3. That was 2. Now, f prime. We have to find the derivative of f. f prime. So, this is one fourth. 
there. I never actually had to find the rule for the inverse. That is the value of the derivative of the inverse at 3. You need to know that formula. Yes. What's the value of the inverse? trying to say is the inverse of the derivative? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that's a thing. The inverse of the derivative. So you're taking the derivative and you're finding its inverse. Well, I don't know. Let's find out. We can find the inverse of that. Maybe. So that's the inverse of the derivative. So if we plug in one fourth, do we get three? Yeah. One fourth minus one is negative three fourths, the square root of negative one. No, we get i. <laughs> So, we don't do calculus with imaginary numbers. There is calculus with imaginary numbers, but we don't do it. No, 